So after discussing what this production removes and changes from the book, what does it add to the book? Well, mostly songs. Or that is mostly music for the songs that are already in the book. There is one brand new song, the theme song The Greatest Adventure, sung by Glenn Yarborough, and yeah, I have a fondness for this, even if I think the sentiment is kind of simplistic, even for this story, but it has a charm that I can't deny. The The rest of the songs have lyrics adapted by Jules Bass from Tolkien's original poetry, with music by Maury Laws. Most of the lyrical adaptation comes in the form of abridgment, although for In the Valley they straight up change the stanza structure. The line, and Balin and Dwalin down into the valley in June, haha, -ha, gets changed to And Balin and Dwalin in June My dear Elrond, your hospitality is magnificent. Now I know what you're thinking right now, but 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 what does that mean for the later stanza they were setting up a rhyme for? And listen and hark till the end of the dark to our tune, ha ha. Oh, they just cut that stanza. So, you know, solutions. Moving on from elves singing, uh, I have to note that Tolkien describes the goblin singing as croaking and that their songs sound truly terrifying and horrible. He paints the picture of a very unpleasant experience listening to the goblins sing about whipping and cracking. So naturally, the good people at Rankin Bass Productions decided to turn the goblin songs into absolute freaking jams! <laughs> In a fiery breeze. These are the catchiest songs in the whole thing. They are awesome, they rock, they are completely tonally inappropriate for their places in the story, but I love them. Ask him to explain his weapon. <laughs> this sword is named Orchrist, the Goblin Cleaver. <laughs> Murderers! Elf friends! I do love how the goblins have squeaky speaking voices, but beautiful, rich, deep singing voices. Thurl paved the way for the latter-day career of Robert Goulet. The soundtrack album also includes a song that didn't make it into the film, Bilbo's Taunting of the Mirkwood Spiders. Hey, Adderkop, hey, Adderkop, you can't catch anybody. I'd be curious to see how this would have been integrated into the animation, assuming that that was ever the plan. And of course, being a sequel to The Hobbit, there are songs. Problem is, there's less poetry in Return of the King than there is in The Hobbit or even Fellowship, so most of these songs are kind of made up out of whole cloth, although some are sort of inspired by lines of dialogue from the text. And with a few exceptions, these songs are largely forgettable. But they gave them an in-universe singer this time, and yes, he's Glenn Yarborough. We have brought with us someone who has written a ballad about the adventures of Frodo. The Minstrel of Gondor. <laughs> Frodo of the Nine Fingers and the Ring of Doom. Now, the lyrics of this song don't come from the book, but the existence of it does. Book 6, Chapter 4, there's a Minstrel of Gondor singing about Frodo of the Nine Fingers and the Ring of Doom. And yet, both Tolkien Gateway and One Wiki to Rule Them All claim this character only exists in the film. I know about a character from the book that the two most prominent Tolkien wikis don't. I should not be so smug about this because I'm sure I've been getting so many other details wrong. Anyway, in the book, the Minstrel of Gondor is in Gondor, which makes sense, but I guess he came all this way to Rivendell just to tell Bilbo the story because, well, what else is he gonna do? So he sings a song that's one of the few in this that I kind of like, even if the lyrics need work. When Bilbo found that shiny ring in Gollum's cave of gloom, he never thought that it would turn into a ring of doom. Well, in his defense, if a ring of doom had been a concept that was even on his radar, the possibility might have crossed his mind that the one in the cave of gloom would become one. Frodo of the Nine Fingers and the Ring of Doom It started with a hobbit 
in Gollum's cave of gloom. Boy, you were really proud of that rhyme, huh, Jules? As for the rest of the songs, well, there's the song that reprises whenever someone succumbs to the ring's temptation or is on the verge of doing so. The bearer of the ring, the wearer of the ring, stands on the very brink of fate. The bearer of the ring, the wearer of the ring, the bearer of the ring, the wearer of the ring, the snarer of the ring, the Sharer of the ring, the scarer of the ring, Tom Lehrer of the ring. There's less can be more during Sam's settling down fantasy, which musically is like an okay folk music B-side, but the lyrics are at least attempting to engage with Tolkien's themes of the value of simplicity. Less can be more, and small can be beautiful. I don't want it all. Just part of wonderful form. Or maybe it's just the production team trying to justify the simpler TV cartoon rather than a more complete adaptation. There's Leave Tomorrow Till It Comes, a song that seems counterintuitive at this urgent hour in the story. Leave tomorrow till it comes. Sleep will ease your mind. But it pairs with this wild dream sequence. So Frodo has some dreams in Fellowship that are usually left out of adaptations. Return of the King mentions uneasy dreaming, but it doesn't really give specifics. So this is pretty much made up out of whole cloth. Frodo dreams of a happier version of the quest where Mordor is lush, orcs are friendly, destroying the ring is simple, but apparently still necessary even though there's no evil. And then Gandalf and Sam turn into orcs, which are no longer friendly. It's a wild moment, but it is a pretty accurate representation of anxiety dreams. There's The Towers of the Teeth, a taunting song the forces of Mordor seem to be singing at Aragorn's men as they march toward the Black Gate. If you win, then you will lose. Choice of evils yours to choose. Retreat. 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 Heads I win and tails you lose. Why do hobbits wear no shoes on feet? Retreat. 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 There's the victory song in the denouement, which isn't all that memorable, but I do like that it includes a reference to the Houses of Healing. The end of the ring, the return of the king, he shall rule with a true healing hand. Throughout the piece, there's a reprise of The Road Goes Ever Ever On, which includes a verse about... not trying? It's so easy not to try Let the world go drifting by If you never say hello You won't have to say goodbye I am not sure if it's in favor of giving up so or if it's saying, good for you, you made an effort, that takes work. Or maybe it's singing to the armies of Mordor that just immediately gave up when Aragorn showed up? I don't know, it's really hard to read, this one. Also, there's the best song in the whole movie. Where there's a whip, there's a way. All the goblin songs, total jams. I don't care that the song is totally inappropriate for this movie, this universe, this everything. I love this song. I love these orcs. Look at this Muppety Orc captain with his wide mouth and a neck that looks like the perfect fit for Carol Spinney's arm. I love it all. And even though this scene makes me want to apologize to Disney's Robin Hood and take back everything I said about its reused animation, it is the best scene in the whole movie. Because it does three very interesting things that aren't in the book. First off, it humanizes the orcs way more than Tolkien ever did. We don't want to go to war today, but the Lord of the Lashes has remained Yep, big mood. Second, it gives Sam even more agency as he actually fuels the fight that allows him and Frodo to escape. And you call yourself an orc? You're right! Right. Kill him. Own him. And 
third, it changes the battalion that they squabble with from other orcs to a battalion of men, which ties it thematically with the notion that the world of man is taking over, a theme that is pervasive in the book, and it's the theme that the movie really seems to double down on, even though I'm not entirely sure how it feels about that theme. 